What's up guys, this is XX Model Warfare Game Attack Foundry Chicken and today I'm going to show you how to install a program called XPS Link. This is a similar program to XLink Kai, it does the exact same thing XLink Kai does, except it works, it tends to work for lots more more people because um, certainly a lot of people are getting errors with XLink Kai that just don't seem to be fixable. And I have had one on my Xenon JTAG, XLink Kai does not detect the console but it does detect my RGH console so you know I just I can't fix can't fix it it works fine my RGH X and Kai is great but on my Xenon JTAG X link Kai will not detect it however XBS link works with both consoles no problem so I mean if you if you just had enough of X and Kai and it's not working for you then give XPS Link a shot. I have made a full in-depth tutorial on how to set up XLink Kai, but if you're having problems where it's like not detecting the console or something like that, then try XPS Link. So I'll put a download to the script in the description to uh, XPS Link. It'll just be their home page here, and then <clears throat> you go to XPS Link download, select your operating system and download it. Um, okay, you also need a program called WinPCAP or WinPCAP. Uh, otherwise, XPS Link will crash when you start it up. Uh, that's inevitable. You must have this WinPCAP. I'll also put this in the description, and you just download it here. Uh, once you have WinPCAP installed, you should be able to run XPS Link without it crashing on startup to be a great help. It can take a while to load up this program. There we go. Uh, make sure you're on the latest version. I will put the latest version in the description. The latest version just now is 0.9.5.3. Um, okay, so most likely you'll start off on the info tab. So click over to settings. Choose your um, username kind of like your gamer tag and uh, then click on network in here this is like your configure Kai uh, what you do is select your network adapter whichever one you're using um, if you start the engine with the wrong adapter selected uh, it, the program might crash because that happens to me a lot if I select the wrong adapter click start engine and I'll just the program will just crash so make sure you have the right adapter selected. Um, there's different setups that you can have. It's just the same as XLink Kai setups. Uh, if you have your uh, computer connected to the internet through wireless, uh, then you use your wireless uh, card will be your adapter. And um, if you're connected through an ethernet cable, then it will be your um, <coughs> it will be your what? Uh, local area connection, which I'll try to find mine, but that's it there. So, no. yeah. Anyway, it'd be local area connection or Ethernet adapter or something like that. Uh, if you have a different setup like me, I'm set up as in my Xbox is actually connected to my computer with an Ethernet cord, and then my computer's connected to my uh, router with a wireless connection. So to set that up, I need to be using a network bridge or connection sharing. So if you're using connection sharing, if you have the same setup as me, if you're using connection share sharing, it'll still be your wireless card that you select as your adapter. And if you, the other setup is a network bridge, which kind of like uh, fuses the two adapters together, local area and wireless connection then you select your network bridge. Or you can, if you don't know, you can just keep selecting each one until the program doesn't crash. Uh, okay, so next you have bind to IP. This is your local IP. It'll probably put that in automatically for you, especially if you have these two boxes ticked. Uh, if not, then you can go to connect to show all connections or on Windows 7 and Vista, it's in Network and Sharing Center. Click on your adapter and somewhere it will tell you the IP. So on XP it tells you at the bottom left. So 
make sure that IP matches the one that's in here. Okay, as for incoming port, 31415 is the most common. It's uh, XPS Link's main port, so that's the one that you should forward, but if you're already using this port for something else, or you don't want to use this port for whatever reason, you can use any other port you want, just make sure you type that port in here, make sure it's forwarded, make sure no firewalls are blocking the port, and make sure no other program is using the port either. But I would just suggest you use this one, 31415, because it is XPS Link's main port. So check the box that says use UPMP NAT automatic port forwarding. Uh, use cloud server to check incoming port. Um, just tick all three of these. Okay, here we go. This I'm going to take you over to the Xbox for this. Uh, if you you can just skip the video over a little bit if you already know your MAC address. But what you want to do is if you don't know your MAC address, then enable. Okay, no, never mind. Um, you need to put your Xbox MAC address in here so that XPS Link recognizes your console. It's basically like Xlink Kai detecting your console. You just got to type in, you got to do it manually on this program and put it in here, uh, your MAC address. I think the program can work properly without it, but it, it's much better to have your MAC address in here. Now, this is the MAC address of your Xbox that so you need to put in here, not the MAC address of your computer or anything like that it has to be the xbox so i'm going to take you over to the xbox now and show you how to find your mac address on the xbox if you already know just skip the video till i go back to the computer so all right okay guys to find your mac address i'm sorry um the bad quality just on this because this is just very short and uh just wanted to i just going to be bothered setting up the dazzle so uh go to Sorry, so I go to system, go down to network settings, uh, choose your network. Great, mine's gonna have to be wireless, whatever. Um, then go up to configure network, scroll over to the right to additional settings, and go down to advanced settings, host name, alternate MAC address. Press A on that and then it'll tell you what your MAC address is in there. Okay, so once you're back on the computer, once you find your MAC address, uh, click this box and type your MAC address in here and then click Add. And then it will add that into this box. And that will allow XBS Link to recognize your console. So make sure you have that in there. I believe, I have used XBS Link before without having to type in the MAC address and it did work. Um, but I mean, it is recommended to put it in because it, you know, it's just just do it because it will help having the MAC address in there. It might fix some errors and stuff. Okay, so I don't think you need that enabled. You can enable that. I don't think it makes much of a difference for me anyway on that. So that's the setup that you need. To get this program to run so next thing I'm going to tell you how to do is how to port forward the port because it must be forwarded I know it says automatic port forwarding it doesn't always work let's try see if we get anything oh well the program started for me okay but it still will cause me problems because I don't have my port forwarded. So to forward the port, um, whichever port you're going to use for XPS Link, you need to go into your internet browser and log on to your router's homepage. To find the router homepage, if you click on Start Run, type in CMD, click OK, you'll get the command prompt up, and then type in ipconfig one word enter and down here you see it says default gateway you type in that into URL bar so as you can see mine was 192.168.0.1 I'll log on there 
Okay, so I've logged on to my router. Uh, it will probably ask you for a username and password. Um, hopefully you know what that username and password is. If, it, if you don't, try and use the defaults. Uh, the defaults you can get if you just go onto Google and type in your router name and router model and type in default password or default username and password then it will tell you. It, it might also be on the back of your router. If you if you can't log on maybe some family members change the password or something you have to find out from that. But anyway once you log on to your router you need to go to services. For me it's called services. Lots of router, every router page looks different depending on what type of router you have and um, that's the tricky part to tell you how to do this because every router looks completely different to this unless of course you have a Netgear router like me but if you don't it might be under port forwarding it might actually be a, a page a port forwarding page uh, for me it's called services you just have to look around until you find your port forwarding page on your router but it'll most likely be in services or custom services or port forwarding. So you want to add a custom service. Um, now this option TCP slash UDP that's what you want. If your router doesn't have that option then you have to forward the port once for TCP and then forward the port again for UDP and that'll do it both. Uh, that'll be the equivalent to doing TCP slash UDP. But if you're lucky enough to have TCP slash UDP, you'll need to forward the port port once. So name the port whatever you want. Oops, I was going to call it SMK there. XPS link uh, start port 31415. Uh, oops. Same with the finish port, make it the same. Uh, or whichever port you're going to be using for XPS link is what you put in here. It may also ask you for the local IP address. It doesn't ask me because my router uh, automatically de uh, detects it, I think. But most routers do ask you for your local IP, which again, it will show up here above your default gateway IP address. If it asks you to type in a, an IP address, then you put that in. And it's also in connect to all connections. Click on your adapter bottom left again and tell your IP address. <clears throat> okay so apply. Now you may also have a router firewall. I do unfortunately which means uh, I need to unblock the ports on my router firewall. So go to your, I mean if, if your router doesn't have a firewall you don't need to do this but if you don't know look on all the router links and see if you can find firewall in there somewhere and if it does say firewall in there somewhere then your router does have a firewall and you'll need to unblock the ports on the firewall. You maybe don't have to but it's recommended because you can get lots of problems if you don't do this. So again every page looks different, every router is different on how you do this. So you know yours may look completely different to this but what you basically what you have to do is choose your port uh, make sure that the firewall is not blocking it so allow or, or don't block or something like that and then it will ask you to maybe enter your local IP address which you enter and then you apply so I'm doing an address range because my IP is dynamic and it changes but it only ever changes between 0 0.1 to about 0 0.9 so I'm just going to put 1 to 9 so that covers that and I don't want it to log um, okay and now I need to add an inbound service as well so it's the same thing what you have to do select the XPS link port you're going to use allow enter, this doesn't give me an address range so I'm going to have to enter the local IP that I'm using yep, ok and never lock uh, you know you would say that wouldn't you, oh wow fail, put an O instead of a 0 I should edit that bit 
it out. Anyway, once that's done, uh, that's you unblocked it on your router firewall. You may also have, well, you will have most likely a normal firewall, like a Windows firewall. So to unblock it on your Windows firewall, you need to go to your control panel, Windows firewall, exceptions, and make sure XPS link is ticked. If it's not ticked, make sure it's ticked. If it doesn't show up, add a program, find XPS link, click OK. Mine's already on the list, but do that and make sure that XPS link is ticked. Second of all, you may have an antivirus firewall. Um, so, you know, if you have an antivirus firewall, then make sure that you've got exceptions for XPS link on your antivirus firewall. Okay, finally, once you have successfully done that, you want to click Start Engine. I'm going to stop it because I just forwarded my port, so I want to make sure it's working. There we go. Okay, um, so there's two ways that you can connect to people on this program. The first way is, it, okay, say you're hosting then you need to click start engine tell whoever like your friend or whoever it is who wants to connect to you tell them what your port is tell them your IP address and it needs to be not your local IP address it needs to be your proper IP address to find this out I go to what is my IP.com and this website there's loads of websites to just tell you what your IP address is so you tell them this IP address and then your friend types in your port here and he puts your IP in here and then he clicks directly connect to remote host and then he connects to you and vice versa if you're trying to connect to someone else like your friend's hosting you to put their port in there put their IP address in the remote host section and click directly connect to remote host and then that's you connected to them other way, the, this is the more easy, the easier way to connect to other people is to go to clouds. There'll be this uh, website in this box here. Just leave that. Don't don't tamper with that. Just click load, and then it will give you all the games that are on at the moment. So if you want to join someone's game, I don't think there's somebody on Modern Warfare 3 new map only to you 15. Okay, why not? And click join slash create and it'll join their game. And there's all the people that are in that game. Jesus, quite popular. Holy shit. Um, okay, that's quite a lot of people. Anyway. And then you can connect to whoever's hosting this game. And you'll be in a game with all these people. Uh, right, leave. Um, if you're hosting your own game, click on a blank area, uh, go down here, call it whatever you want, so I'll call it just test or something, make the ping um, 999, what the hell is it, 10, 99999, that means that anyone can join no matter how high their ping is, put a password in if you want a password, uh, and then click join slash create and then that will create so yeah that's how you do it It's that's how you host a game so that's pretty much everything covered I think so I'm not a great expert on this program I've not used it that much but um, it is pretty good though the fact that it doesn't seem to have as much problems as excellent Kai does connecting and stuff like that so uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial if it was helpful then leave a like uh, subscribe for more tutorials and um, if, you ha if you've got any problems uh, post a comment I'll try and get back to you like I said I'm not a great expert on this program but still I'll try and help you anyway so thanks for watching guys